In this video, we'll begin developing a perturbation theory for a non-degenerate eigenstate of a model Hamiltonian, which we're denoting by h hat with a zero. Uh, we'll denote this non-degenerate eigenstate by ket and zero. And since this is uh, non-degenerate, that means that its energy is strictly smaller and greater than uh, any other adjacent states, assuming in this notation that the energies are ordered uh, from increased uh, from smallest to, to largest. And our ultimate goal is we wanna know how the energy of this eigenstate and how the state itself changes as we turn on a perturbation that we're denoting by delta h hat. In other words, we are looking to solve uh, the Schrodinger equation in this form. Okay, so here is our perturbation. Cat n denotes the new state, the new eigenstate of the energy as the perturbation is turned on. En denotes the new energies of every state in the presence of this perturbation. And notice here that there are uh, two main unknowns, cat n and en. So we'll need to solve for both of them. And we'll denote this equation by equation one. All right, so to do this, we're going to assume that uh, our eigenstates and uh, their corresponding energies, that this can be written as a power series uh, in terms of lambda, of this parameter lambda. So what I mean by that is we can write our energy eigenstate by the original eigenstate of the, uh, the known eigenstate of the original Schrodinger equation plus a first order correction to that, first order on lambda, a second order correction in lambda, and so on. And this can have infinitely many uh, terms. Likewise, the energies uh, can be written as the original energy of the states without the perturbation plus a first order correction, a second order correction, and so on uh, for increasing orders of lambda. And the idea behind this is very similar to, uh, for example, a Taylor series expansion where we approximate some complicated function as a power series of uh, polynomials. So in general, we, uh, we know the state n zero and its energy en zero. This is from the original Schrodinger equation with the model Hamiltonian. Uh, however, the other terms, so n i and en i, uh, these are unknowns uh, for i greater than or equal to one. And this is what we're interested in determining each one of these quantities. And importantly, we're assuming that these quantities do not depend on lambda. So all of the lambda dependence in this expansion is out here. So just some uh, definitions. So in general, cat and I, this is the ith correction to the original eigenstate of the model Hamiltonian. Uh, e and I, 
is the height correction to uh, the original energy of this eigenstate. And keep in mind here that we're assuming that this eigenstate has an energy that's distinct from every other state in the spectrum of the Hamiltonian. And the important thing to notice here is uh, as lambda goes to zero, the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian tends to our original eigenstate. So lambda tends to zero means that we're turning off the perturbation and you'd expect our state to converge to the original eigenstate without the perturbation. Likewise, the energy will also tend to the original energy uh, of our problem. Okay, so the nice thing about this perturbation is it's got that physical intuition that as we turn off the perturbation with this parameter lambda, we recover our original result. So we're going to take uh, these quantities and plug them into this equation that we're trying to solve. And for simplicity, we're going to take this term and bring it over to the left-hand side. So uh, our, our equation one can now be written as follows. So we have our new Hamiltonian. We have the perturbative expansion of the state. Our energy eigenstate or eigenvalue. And uh, that same Uh, expansion of the eigenstate. This, uh, to save some room, I then write it out, but this uh, also has its own perturbative expansion. Okay, so this EN should be thought of as this power series expansion in all these terms. And this is equal to zero. So now we want to collect uh, terms of the same power. So anything that has a lambda to the power of zero, we put that together. Anything that has uh, a first order, anything that's multiplied by lambda, we put together by lambda squared and so on. And we're going to get a series of uh, a system of equations that we'll need to solve. So we'll start by putting all of the uh, energy terms together. So zeroth order is just our original Hamiltonian with the original energy. In first order, we have these two terms. In second order, we have this term. And then this continues, uh, let's say, Lth order is something like that. And this continues indefinitely. This is multiplying our eigenstate. Okay, we can go to Lth order. 
and so on. And this is still equal to zero. So we've just collected terms of the same order together. And now we're going to expand these two or distribute these terms into this one. And again, recollect back all terms of the same order of lambda. And the reason for doing that is because uh, this left-hand side of this equation, this is just a polynomial in lambda. So for this equation to be satisfied, every coefficient of lambda has to vanish. So they must be equal to zero. So what we can do then is, uh, which greatly simplifies the problem, is we can treat each coefficient separately, solve for uh, how we can make that coefficient vanish, and we have a sequential solution to our problem. Right. So what that means is, we solve for each order. Sequentially, so we solve for zeroth order. We use that information to solve for first order. We use that information to solve for second order and so on until we found uh, all the orders that we're interested in. in in theory. So if we expand these two terms out, the zeroth order coefficient, so the coefficient that's multiplying, uh, they shouldn't have those squares. So this is lambda to the power of zero, so zeroth order. We have this equation that we need to satisfy. However, this equation is just uh, our original time independent Schrodinger equation for the model Hamiltonian for which we already know the solution. So this equation has already been satisfied to begin with. So there's nothing new there. First order, so any the coefficient of lambda to the one. So now we have the first order correction to the state, multiplying these uh, two energy terms. And this is equal to the first order correction in the energy minus the perturbation and the original eigenstate of our model Hamiltonian. So in this case, we have two unknowns. We don't know the first order correction to the state and we don't know the first order correction to the energy. Uh, we'll do it for elf order. Okay, so we'll skip a few steps here. The coefficient of lambda to the L. We again have the same term over here, but now we have the Lth correction to our state. Now we have the L minus one correction to the state be multiplied by these two, by the first order correction and the perturbation plus second order correction to the energy, L minus, minus two correction to the state plus uh, terms all the way until the Lth correction to the energy 
times our original eigenstate. So in general, this is the equation that we'll need to solve. And the idea is to, uh, as I said before, gradually build up the solution starting from here, use this information to solve this one, use this information to solve second order and so on, so that you gather up all of these unknowns and you're ultimately left with two unknowns in every order. Okay, and the general recipe for solving these, so zeroth order is already solved. For higher orders, uh, we need one more piece of information. And that is that, uh, higher order corrections to the state which we're going to denote again by n cat and i uh, are orthogonal to the original eigenstate. So what that means is if you take the inner product of the original eigenstate with any one of its corrections, this is equal to zero for i is equal to one, two, three, et cetera. And what this equation is saying is that uh, the corrections to the eigenstate does not have any contributions from the original uh, eigenstate. So there's no, if you think of this as vectors, there, the corrections don't have any component along the direction of the original eigenstate. Okay, so it has no component along the original eigenstate. Okay, so using this information as well as the general properties of the eigenstate, uh, we're going to start looking in the next video at calculating the first order correction to the energy. Uh, so, Looking at this equation, we're going to figure out what this value, what the value of this energy correction is.